Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. This week, I want to give a huge thank you to Derry Stravain District Council, who allowed me to use many of the images you see in this week's video, because they are holding the 500th anniversary for the Battle of Knock Vaux exhibition, which is in the alleyway theater between the 4th of June all the way to the 22nd of July. So you definitely have to go and check that one out, guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and all the best. Foundations of the Battle of Nakavo can go all the way back to the end of the War of the Roses in 1490, where both the O'Neills and the O'Donnells started to bash heads. For the majority of the War of the Roses, the O'Donnells were known as the Kings of the North and really dominated the North of Ireland. However, coming to the end of it in 1490, the O'Neills were starting to go on a rise. They had a massive alliance with the Fitzgeralds and Con O'Neill, his mother was a Fitzgerald and his father was an O'Neill. The Fitzgeralds themselves were also the head of the Irish Parliament at the time and were a really powerful faction on the island. In fact, Henry VII had referred to Garrow's Fitzgerald as king all but in name in Ireland. The O'Neills were starting to build an alliance, not, not just amongst themselves and their own clan, but also with the McDonalds of Antrim, the Beasel clan, the McSweeney's, and of course the Fitzgeralds themselves, who was on his mother's side. Of course the O'Donnells and the O'Neills started to engage into cattle riding since 1490, and going into 1511, O'Donnell was a bit confident that his realm was secure after both the War of the Roses and various engagements with the Burgs. The O'Donnells decided that they would go on pilgrimage to Rome. On their way back, they would call into the court of Henry VII in England. There, Henry VII and Hugh O'Donnell got on exceptionally well. In fact, on one night, Henry VII even knighted O'Donnell as a knight of his own realm. In 1519, Con O'Neill became the head of the O'Neill clan, succeeding his half-brother Art O'Neill as chief of the O'Neill clan. Of course, O'Neill wanted to prove himself as a successful leader and continued to harass and attack the O'Donnells, but O'Neill wanted to do more damage. He wanted to take the O'Donnell's territories for himself. Of course, O'Neill wanted to prove himself as a true leader of the clan, and to do so, he decided to run a campaign against the O'Donnells in 1522. First, O'Neill was going to march his main army that was made up of Gaelic, Kearns, Galloglass, Bonocta, Anglo Irish, Ritera, Billmen, Longbowmen, and finally Redshanks, had come over from Scotland. His next plan was to move his main army up to Ballyshannon Castle. From there, they would siege and then sack the castle. When O'Donnell found out about this, he decided to divide his army into two, give his first half of his army over to Manus O'Donnell and then march them to Tyrone where they would cause anarchy and force O'Neill back into his own territory. From there O'Donnell himself would then march his main army over to fight O'Neill and force him back into his own lands or defeat him. A scout had reported back to O'Neill that Manus was burning Tyrone. O'Neill quickly gathered his army and marched back to his own territory. However, along the way, since they were going back anyway and won't be returning, they decided to burn and attack more villages on their way back and take more plunder and loot. In doing so, this would slow them down even further and it wasn't long until night had fallen. Here is when O'Neill decided to camp at Nakavo. O'Donnell, after scouting camp, realised that O'Neill had well outnumbered him and decided to hold an assembly of all the O'Donnells together. Here they devised a plan 
to bring just only Kearns and Galloglass and try to ambush and kill as many O'Neills as possible. And so they did so. O'Neill on the other hand had found out from a spy that O'Donnell was coming from at night to do a night attack. So O'Neill went over and told the people who were already on watch to watch out for the enemy who was coming. That was the O'Donnells. Hugh O'Donnell told his Kearns and Galloglass not to bother bringing the horses because if they failed, they were going to die there and then. They would be slaves to no one. So O'Donnell marched with his men in the middle of the night, trying to make no sounds whatsoever as they snuck amongst the camp, slowly but surely creeping up to the camp itself. However, O'Neill's watchmen had seen the O'Donnells approaching and had screamed out as they ran towards the camp, screaming and shouting. O'Donnells freaked out and they ran after the guardsmen, trying to cut them down from behind, but it was too late. The rest of the camp had heard the arrival of the O'Donnells and butchery had soon followed. The O'Donnells had still managed to catch the O'Neills and their allies off guard as they tried to get out of their camps to put on their mail and gammons in and various other armour that they had on. The O'Donnells and the Kearns quickly got to work with their axes, chopping them up. It soon turned into an orgy of violence. It got so out of hand that O'Donnells accidentally chopped up other O'Donnells. The blood went trickling down the forest, splashing against the trees. Con O'Neill managed to escape, but other nobles weren't so lucky. Donald MacDonald, Con MacDonald, Tyg McSweeney, and others such as John Bristol, Owen McMahon, William McMahon, Rory Maguire, and many other nobles were chopped up and killed during the battle, like pieces of wood. After the battle, the clergy would go in and start gathering the bodies and counted up in the local church. In total, they had counted up 900 dead bodies that they had found. This was the bloodiest battle between the O'Neills and the O'Donnells ever fought, and many had believed this was the most bloodiest battle fought in the North. Although, the North of Ireland sure has had many bloody battles, so maybe the Battle of Knockbo is just one of the bloodiest. But perhaps not the bloodiest one. Regardless, the O'Donnells had made a fortune out of loot. They themselves hadn't arrived with any horses, had plenty of their own, on which they used to carry more arms and armour from all the dead that they had killed. They had also picked up very strong liquor and very be beautiful and very rich antiques were also taken such as goblets and plates. For all the violence that had escalated out of hand that day, this wasn't the end of the hatred between the O'Donnells and the O'Neills. The Irish clan wars that had started after the War of the Roses in Ireland would continue all the way to 1531 when O'Donnell would send a letter to the Lordship of Ireland requesting that Henry VIII to give assistance to bring an end to the Irish clan wars. The Lordship of Ireland and the Irish Parliament led by the Fitzgeralds would go into various negotiations. From this point onwards the wars in Ireland would slowly but surely come to an end for a short time and sadly start to bring an end to Gaelic Ireland as the Tudor conquest would kick off in 1534. But that's of a different story and one I'd also wouldn't mind getting myself into. Regardless, I hope you all enjoyed the video guys and as always make sure you subscribe to the channel, check out the merch and other than that enjoy our various playlists that we've got on the channel. Anyway guys, all the best.